And to be honest, guys, this is something I wish I had known when I was in high school and studying for the SAT because I myself was making this exact mistake. So when students come in for tutoring, they have a one big common issue, and that is their score's not going up. It's not that they're not putting in the hours. They are studying. They are working their butts off, but their score's just not going up. So we sit down and we talk about exactly what the student is doing. So my very first question is going to be, what are you doing to study for the SAT right now? How are you trying to raise your SAT score? And the most common thing I hear is, John, I'm studying 16 hours per day. I'm taking 20 full SAT exams a day. I'm running on 48 cups of coffee and I sleep three hours per day. I'm studying that much. My score's not going up. Maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe SAT's not for me and maybe college is not for me. Okay, okay. So I know that you're studying a lot. I know that you're studying 22 hours per day and you're only sleeping two hours a day. I, I get that. But tell me exactly what you're doing. Tell me exactly how you're studying right now. And here's exactly what they do. Look, man, I'm taking 20 full exams per day. I'm taking exam after exam after exam. And my score should go up. Like little Jimmy over there, he started from 1200 and then he took exams after exams after exams. But his score went to 1500 while I'm stuck down to 1200. Like what's going on, man? And that's exactly why your score is not going up. And if you're doing something similar, sleeping two hours per day, studying a lot, but your score's not going up, maybe you're doing something similar like this guy is doing over here. And this is the solution. This is the prescription that I give to my private tutoring students and their score goes up like that. So it's gonna take me about five minutes to explain why your score is not going up. And if you can't focus for the next five minutes, explains exactly why your score's not going up. So here's why. See, why his score wasn't going up was because he wasn't aware of his weaknesses. Let me explain. So think about your SAT score as like filling a bucket. So at the very bottom of the bucket, you miss every single question on the SAT math section, you're at 400. But if you get everything right, you get to 800. And one way to really fill in the bucket or raise your SAT score is by pouring water in there or by taking practice tests. Without a doubt, taking practice tests will raise your SAT score. That's how you get used to the exam. And in the beginning stages, when you're pouring water in, it might sl slowly go up. But at a certain point, you're gonna hit a plateau. Maybe at like 520, you're going to be stuck. And no matter how much water you put in, no matter how many practice exams you take, your score is not gonna go up. It might fluctuate a little bit, maybe go up to 540 or drop to 500, but it's not gonna break the 600, 700, or get to 800. See, what they don't realize is that they're pouring water in here, but they don't recognize that they have these little holes in their buckets. So while you're pouring water in there, your water is slowly seeping out. And no matter how much water you put in there or how many practice tests you take, it's never gonna get any higher than 520 because these holes are what's holding your score down. You put the water in there, they go right out. And the logical thing for you to do is obviously plug in these holes before you put some more water in there or before you take more additional practice exams. But that is what's missing. That's what a lot of students are missing. They don't recognize that they have these holes in here and they're constantly pouring water in there and their score doesn't go up and they complain. So what are these holes? Well, these holes are known as your weaknesses, right? So these holes are where you are missing the questions. And as we all know, SAT, each question tests you on certain concept. And if you're getting this concept wrong, that means you're weak on that concept. That's why you are missing the question. But students are not doing too much about it. Like some people might look at, oh, I got this question wrong. Let me look, take a look at this. And they look at the answer key and they look at the answer key and like, oh, that's how you solve it. Okay, I get it now. And then they move on to the next practice exam. It might feel like you'll be able to solve a similar question that will come up next time. But the problem is if they change up the question a little bit, you're not gonna be able to solve the new question. You understand how to solve this question because the answer key told you exactly how to solve this question. You didn't understand this question, you memorized how to solve this question. That's how, how you know how to solve this question. But when they give you a variation, when they give you a different question in a different exam, you're gonna get this question wrong again. Looking at the answer key and memorizing how to solve a question is not how you get rid of your weakness. And because the weakness is still there, you still have these holes. And when you take next exam and next exam and next exam, you put some more water in there, your score's not gonna go up. You're gonna stuck at exactly 520. Maybe you'll go up to 540 or come down to 500, but you are going to be within this level right here. And another thing I tell my student, whether he decides to study with me or not, is that, hey, look, see, you're taking a practice test, right? Look, man, it seems like what's going on right now is that you are spending 80% of your time and effort solving the practice questions and maybe at most 20% reviewing and understanding exactly where your weaknesses are. But in order for you to raise your SAT score, these two things have to be flopped. 
you have to spend 20% of the time solving because you're gonna have to solve the questions, right? But you're gonna have to spend 80% of the times reviewing your wrong questions and filling in the holes. Unless you fill the holes, you're gonna constantly miss the question and you're never gonna raise your SAT score. And you may be very tempted to just keep doing what you're doing, but remember, you are getting your score. You are stuck exactly where you are at right now because you've been doing what you have been doing. And if you're doing the exact same thing, you're gonna get the exact same result. Some things have to change. And that change, the change you need right now is this change right here. Less time on solving and more time on reviewing the questions and fixing your weaknesses, changing them from weaknesses to strength. And how do you change your weaknesses to strength? By understanding, not memorizing, but understanding the concepts that were tested on the SAT. And after that, he can decide whether he would want to study on his own and study all the concepts, or he can study with me and I'll teach him every single concept that's on the SAT. And some of the students ask, hey, what's the benefit of studying with a tutor versus studying on my own? Well, it's simple. It comes down to just two things. First thing is going to be the materials. See, books that are out there on Amazon or online right now, they don't really cover everything that's on the SAT or they cover stuff that is not even on the SAT. So you will essentially be wasting time and you're essentially going the long way. However, if you study with a tutor, the tutor knows exactly what he's talking about and what is actually on the SAT. So the tutor is going to save you time. Because when the tutor looks at the book, the tutor knows, hey, this is on the exam, this is not on the exam, study this, don't study that. So instead of going in a curved line like that, you go into a straight line and you get to your score faster. And if you're studying for the SAT right now, you can join the Private Admission Hackers SAT Study Group, which is in the description box down below. And you're going to be surrounded by high school students who are also very motivated to raise their SAT score. And I'm also in there too. So you can ask me any questions, a tutor that has experience over a decade. So are you stuck on a certain score? Have you been making this mistake the whole time without even realizing it? Or what do you think about this whole idea? Leave it in the comment section down below. Let me see what you think. And to be honest guys, this is something I wish I had known when I was in high school and studying for the SAT because I myself was making this exact mistake. I was taking exam after exam after exam and was wondering why am I stuck on 520 and why can't I raise my SAT score? And after about six months of like wasting time, and I started applying this method right here and my score started to go up like that. And if I had known this truth earlier, my SAT score would have been so much higher by the time I applied for the colleges and I could have gone to a better, higher schools, but it's too late for me now. So take it as your advantage, take my mistake and use it to your advantage. That's what this channel is all about. So if you're new here, Thanks for stopping by. Consider dropping a like button if you've been enjoying the video. And if you would love to see more of these kind of videos on helping you how to raise your SAT score, consider subscribing to the channel. And it's already the end of the second week of July. So we are halfway through July and the next SAT is coming up in like what, six weeks? So keep prepping, keep working hard and you will see the results. Don't give up, keep prepping, join the Facebook group, study with me and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.